Hey everyone, this is Adam with Jackson A Company and uh, I was asked to do a video on um, how to set up the pan feeder with the control line or the control pan I mean and the motor and everything like that so um, this is the video to describe how to set up the entire pan feeder system um, first of all if you ever have any questions I'm happy to help and uh, I can make new videos on how we set things up or um, offer suggestions and advice on, on how to set it up in, in your system however that you're doing it but uh, without further ado this is how to set up a, a pan feeder system so the first thing to do is um, <clears throat> You've got to connect all of your your lines. I'm in my pull it barn right now because it'll be the quietest. But um, connect all your lines together. That's pretty self-explanatory. Um, put the pans on. They will go on. There's there's lots of different styles, and so I'm not going to go into every single kind. But some of them will will slide in from the end like that into each position. Um, others like this one, you can take on and off. Um, you're right here in the middle of the line it's just kind of tricky to push it on but anyways get all of those set up um, and then next thing is to come down here to um, to your control pan and then the motor now you can buy these kind of together um, if you are a pretty big producer and you're you're buying you know through a barn I'm sure you're gonna have help with this through um, through like Georgia poultry or QC Supply, there's plenty of those companies that will help you like build the entire barn and have it contracted and everything else. But if you're a small scale like me, then uh, you kind of got to find <laughs> smaller ways to do it basically. And so um, one of my favorites then that I bought most of my stuff off of was Farmer Boy Ag. Um, they had a pretty good website so I could go in, select stuff and figure it out myself. Um, otherwise QC Supply is also pretty good. But anyways, what you're going to have to get is a drive motor and then a control pan. There's uh, three different types, I think, of the control pan for like for each brand, basically. But um, anyways, I got this simple. It's just like called a micro switch. So if you look right down in here, you can't hardly tell, but this is actually like a, a flap. And so basically as the, as, oh, well, actually, sorry, it's this thing right here. This is the flap that it has access to the feed down there and um, and so as as feed fills up then it pushes the flap this way which then right here it pushes that thing in and tells it to shut off but there's a spring kind of putting pressure on this so once they eat out of this pan then the feed goes down the spring is able to push that outwards and it turns on the motor fills up the feed again so um, how to actually set this up though first off you will um, bolt the motor to the control pan and um, so that's pretty simple right there the bolt should be attached to the motor already you may have to take these ones on the side out to be able to get them in but uh, after that then you need to get the wiring done and so this is what that looks like you know um, give better instruction so this one right here the, the yellow from the top is my incoming power and then this one going out is going directly to the going directly to the control pan so that's this top line going into the control pan so that's what gets power first um, this all that coil right there that is the wire from the control pan so they actually give you enough so that you could set up this in its own box like up high out of the way and then you can set up these two um, because that's just the communication between the control pan and the motor um, so you could do these in separate boxes but I chose to just do it all in one box I thought it was simpler um, anyways beyond that so this I'm running out of hands here um, this one that my thumb is on that is the other line from the control pan and then this is the the wires going to the to the motor and so as far as that goes um, kind of trying to show best that I can um, yeah it's pretty easy so you've just got a uh, the white one there is your power line and then of course ground so you just connect in um, grounds together 
and then uh, oh yeah sorry the so this is um, the the black wire going to the motor I've got connected to the blue of the control pan I think that I was kind of taking a guess honestly whenever I set this thing up and then also you got that black how you wire that exactly um, I'm not for sure that this is all that super helpful what I'm showing you but um, you're just gonna have to have a little bit of wiring experience to to get it figured out um, I know I I think that I finally found something or else I just took a guess and I was right on the first try and so I just stuck with it but um, but anyways that's what my wiring looks like and those are all just between um, the control pan to the motor because you've already gotten power to the control pan all right so after wiring is done then um, you got to connect it here well actually I'll uh, so well yeah once you push this in you'll have to connect this one thing to pay attention to is that um, that you get the right size motor for the the feed auger that you get um, because I had actually messed up and I bought a motor that had just a little bit too big of a drive here for for this size um, for this size auger and so you got to make sure that those match up whenever you're buying them um, how I overcame that was with my uh, assembly at the other the assembly for the other end of this line it it came with extras of these bars right here um, I'm not even for sure what they were for but anyways I was able to have it machined down and that's how I got this to be able to attach but basically just make sure that you get the right size um, motor and the right size um, connection at the other end for the auger that you have um, but anyways you will do that here in a little bit um, the actual connecting of this so I'm gonna go to the other end and describe that so I'm over here at the other end of my feed line now and for me that is um, actually at the grain bin here and um, if you're a smaller producer like me then this might be a good way to do do it um, I've just got the PVC going in and uh, and then it's curved PVC to then line up with my my actual feed line that's inside um, if you're a pretty big producer and you've doing things the normal way then you've probably got two motors for this barn one would be that like this PVC would actually just go straight and might curve up but it would go straight in drop into a hopper and then that hopper is what um, feeds the rest of that the other line um, I tried to just get away with only doing one motor and so I made mine curve and come straight into the into this grain bin here but um, how you would do it then is is once you've gotten gotten the other end set up with your control pan and the motor then you would come to this end um, push your feed line all the way in um, then go hook it up at the motor so so like I had it there um, bolted on and stuff bolt it to the motor then come back over here and um, and this is where you're gonna need um, at least two vice grips if it's a short line like mine is here it's roughly a hundred feet total um, then then you can probably even do it yourself um, and you need for sure two vice grips if you get into a longer line like a big size barn is would be might be like a, a 400 feet long long feed line then you're gonna need at least two people for sure and three vice grips would really be um, better safer but the idea then is so you've once you push in your feed line or you're in the auger then you're gonna have some of it hanging out here extra um, make sure that you've taken out the slack and at that point then take one of your vice grips and with with no slack in the line mark it right here at the edge um, with the vice grip and that way you've got your your place marked um, then 
you what you need to do and this is where it gets difficult and you would might need another person is you need to pull the auger out to like stretch it so this can be a pretty tough pull um, if you don't have to go if it's not a very big line then you don't have to pull it as far and so that's why you might be able to get away with doing it by yourself but if you've got a really big barn you've got to stretch it a lot then you're gonna need some somebody to um, do the vice grips while you pull on it and that's also why it's beneficial to have um, at least three vice grips so that you can re-grip basically um, and do so safely so anyways um, so you're going to stretch this thing out. That's where once you have it stretched out, you um, you take the other vice grip and you you clamp it on there so that it can't go back inside. Um, then what you're going to do is, since you had it marked um, with the first vice grip where the edge is, you're gonna you have to take out two inches per 50 feet um, of line, and that's how much that you're going to cut off of of the of the auger so that it gets a little bit of stretch to it now remember though that like once you set this thing back in because this is um, this is the bearing and then it has the shaft that attaches to the to the auger but anyways this bearing comes back probably about that much um, and so just kind of calculate that in whenever you're gonna cut it off um, because you you can only mark it right here with the vice grip but that bearing doesn't start until here so so you really need to take off two inches per 50 feet plus whatever that that bearing sets in. Um, yeah, so you're able to then cut off your the extra of the auger so that now you have it properly um, properly stretched. Go ahead and attach that shaft with the bearing on it um, while the, you've got a bunch of auger out here extra and. Uh, and then once that's attached, you can hopefully safely and controlled take off the vice grip that's holding it there and let this slide back into position. Um, at that point, then you've pretty much got an installed feed line. So uh, if you have any questions, then be sure to comment below. Or if you want me to further explain something, then um, I can try to make a video on it. But uh, yeah, happy to help and hope that this was helpful to you. Thanks.